All right, here we go again. It ain't Victory Monday. I don't even remember the last Victory Monday. It's been a while. Uh, this is In the Trenches with Ian Beckles. And there's not a whole lot to celebrate. Uh, I'll be breaking down the Buccaneers game from yesterday. And uh, you know, as Buccaneer fans, early in this season at 3-1, and one, uh, we, were, we had the plumage out and we were all cocky and we're talking about there ain't no way we can lose the South. You, you should just look around the NFL and take heed to what happens every single week. Just look at the narratives every two weeks. They change every two weeks, sometimes every week. One week, San Francisco, pencil them in for the Super Bowl. Three weeks later, they can't win a game. Minnesota's dead. Jefferson's out. My quarterback is out. Cousins out. They start winning football games. It doesn't make sense. The Bucks being three and one didn't make sense. They they weren't good at anything. They they beat a couple teams that were struggling at the time. They got a couple lucky bounces. But now we're eight games into the season. That's halfway, almost halfway. I would ask you, what are we good at? Most teams can give you one thing. One. We don't have one thing. There's not one thing the Buccaneers are consistently good at. You got to be. And just as a Buccaneer fan, we're three and five. Can we all say we're not going anywhere? Can we, is that good? We're not coming off 11 and six a year. We're coming off of eight and nine year. Can we say we're done? Because I don't give a crap what anybody else does in the South. We can't beat anybody. We can't create a scenario where we can beat anybody. If you don't think that going to somebody's house and playing a, a rookie who is playing well, not that well, get out of here. Okay, nine touchdowns and one and one interception in seven games doesn't impress me. It doesn't. Winning football games along with that adds a little to it. But that's a don't lose mentality. And look, Stroud's doing amazing. What Stroud did yesterday had nothing to do with those nine touchdowns and one interception. He undressed a defense that you guys told me was good. Now, I do a show on The Bone every Saturday from noon to two. And I broke down not what I thought the Buccaneers will be or are. I said, this is what they are. Our quarterback is 21st in the league, which makes it below average. Our running game is 30th in the league, which makes it almost the worst. We have the, the, we have the smallest average per rush. Baker Mayfield has one of the smallest uh, uh, yards per t uh, for completion. Defensively, we're 20th. D haven't we been saying our defense is good? Has you think anybody else with the 21st rank or 19th rank defense is bragging on their defense? And then what happened yesterday is a microcosm of these Buccaneers as of late. And listening to sports radio, which I do every week, and my boy Jay Retcher was hanging out one love to Jay Retcher last this weekend. I love to hear people say this. It wasn't Baker's fault. So what about the previous three weeks we scored 39 points? Well, did you say it was his fault then? Because I'll be damned. The long and short of it is when you have a quarterback that doesn't complete much and running game that doesn't do anything and a defense that doesn't put the quarterback on the ground and a defense that doesn't get a lot of turnovers or when they do, it's kind of lucky. What happens is you don't consistently win. And this team is not built to consistently win anything whatsoever. You hear me? I mean nothing. Am I going to be tough on the Buccaneers? I, don't, I hope you don't want anything other than that. I hope you don't want anything other than the reality of what happened yesterday. And what happened yesterday was we went into a team's stomping grounds and made them look like world beaters. All right? And I mean world beaters. Stroud been good, but he hasn't been this damn good. 470 yards passing. On the last drive, before they scored a touchdown, I said this. The football gods are not going to let a rookie throw for 450 yards and lose. The football gods are watching. If you let a rookie throw for 400 and some yards, you're going to lose every freaking time. You can't let a rookie throw for 300 yards, 470 yards in regulation. Wow. I mean, 
It's it's hard for me to watch. The Buccaneers gave up 208 yards in the third quarter. What? 208 yards in one quarter? As, as an old school Buccaneer, there was many, many games. I don't know if he had 208 yards the whole game. That's real. You can look that up. That's real, real, real. What are we watching? And what are we as Buccaneer fans to, to think going down the way? There's a lot. And listen, there's a lot of stones are going to be thrown, okay? A lot of stones are being thrown, some at Baker. Not that, that many. I don't think Baker's the biggest problem. But I will say this. Baker's not the problem, but Baker's not the solution either. And he's not the solution down the way. I don't know why anybody would want Baker Mayfield to be the quarterback next year. You, you, it would make more sense for Kyle Trask to be the quarterback next year in a rebuilding year. Why do you want Baker Mayfield to be the quarterback in a rebuilding year? What are you rebuilding? What are we building around right now? As we speak right now, what are the Buccaneers building around? Let me know, please. I'm not sure what the nucleus of this team is. Listen, if you have a good running game or you have a good running back or you have a good offensive line or you have a good pass rush, let me tell you what you can't, it can't be the nucleus of your team, your defensive backs. And unfortunately, I think the best group on our team is our defensive backs. I'm not done with Carlton Davis. Wait for that one. Our defensive backs may be the best group of our team. Antoine Winthrop Jr. plays on any football team. And stars on any football team, all right? Jamel Dean, who went down yesterday with a concussion, hopefully that's not anything bad. That's 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 our best group, okay? That can't be your best group. The best group cannot be the defensive backs. The best group has to be the defensive line because the defensive backfield cannot shine without a great defensive line, period. So let's go back to our defensive backs. If I'm up here on In the Trenches the day after a loss, talking about Carlton Davis being the worst football player on the field, will never win. Carlton Davis was by far the worst football player on the field yesterday. Carlton Davis, who Jamar Chase said, that was the toughest dude he went against. Jamar Chase is a bad son of a bitch. He's a bad, he's bad. For, that's, that's a nice notch on Carlton Davis's, you know, Bedhead, that's that's cool. But that yesterday was not a good Carlton Davis day. And I don't know if he's going through something. He really hasn't played great this year. Statistic, me and Jason were talking before the uh, podcast. One interception in the last 31 games, including the playoffs. One interception. And it's not like we're shutting nobody down. Like, okay, if you have one interception and we're giving up 150 yards passing, that's cool. That's okay. But the Bucs give up the booty, okay? They were 20th ranked before yesterday's game. They're probably going to be ranked 25th after that, maybe. That's a lot of yards to give up in one damn game. It's a lot of yards. Antoine Winfrey Jr. is going to continue to make plays, okay? Um, Kansi made a play or two here and there. Uh, defensively, other than that, I'm looking for pluses defensively. <laughs> there's not a lot up. There's not a lot in there. There just isn't, unfortunately. Levante David. I, Levante David is, is a solid football player. Okay, I don't. I don't. I don't have much to say about Levante David. He had the punch on the fumble that uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. recovered. His third fumble recovery this year. Antoine Winfield Jr. is is. You know, it's nothing's a coincidence in sports, right? If you are you you recover three fumbles in the NFL, that means you're around the football all the time. That's facts. Okay. If you're a golfer and you watch Tiger Woods and Tiger Woods used to chip in from the sand all the time, that's not a, that's not luck. He's done that many, many times. Antoine Winfield Jr. is always around the football. And everybody around him needs to take heed to that because defensively we don't, we don't look that aggressive anymore. If I asked you this year, how many big licks have we got? How many times have we just tore somebody's neck out to sock it? How many times have you, you, can you think of any? We're, not, we're just not an overly aggressive football team and to go in to a football game against a rookie and then remove their kicker and then have I believe as a running back I believe as the backup kicker big ups to him for making that field goal I I, I predicted it I go he's gonna make that I have a feeling he's gonna make this oh they wouldn't put him out there and he made it clean it was clean 
what else do you need? I mean, you can't win that football game where they're conceding at the end of the game and they're going for two instead of, you have a good defense and to make a team go for two, you'll kill them. You should kill them. They won't score many touchdowns, but they won't get to twos either. I, I just don't know where we are as a football team. And we can go ahead and say Baker's, it wasn't Baker's fault, but the previous games it was. And if it wasn't, how good, the you're putting, Baker Mayfield plays the same position as Tom Brady played, okay? If you think Baker Mayfield played well this year, you better not have said Tom Brady was playing poorly. Because a good Baker Mayfield game is a poor Tom Brady game. Look up the statistics if you want. And if you're a Baker Mayfield fan, and listen, I don't know if anybody's more suited for this team than Baker Mayfield. It just, nobody's going to win, okay? Nobody. But Baker Mayfield's not the answer. He can't be the answer. He's not the solution. That's facts. And I don't know where anybody thinks we're going to be going with Baker Mayfield if we keep on moving forward. If you're a fan of his, cool. But if you're a fan of his and a Buccaneer fan, you should want what's best for the organization. And once again, I'm asking you, who are we building around? You you have to build around something, everybody. If you have if you're building a building, you got to have some beams. We don't have we don't have many beams. We have a couple individuals here and there, but a beam has to be a group. Tristan Wirth's a beam. We need four other beams so that we have a good you know base. Who's the other beam on the offensive line? Who's the beam at quarterback? Who's the beam at tight end? Who's the beam? Wide receiver? Okay, let's go to statistics here. Wide receiver. At the beginning of the year, everybody, the Buccaneers have as good a wide receiving core as anybody else in the league. They do, huh? Uh, I'll tell you who they're not better than that. It's the Texans. Facts. Um, Mike Evans, four receptions, 87 yards. Um, and Chris Godwin, two receptions, 16 yards. Palmer in the middle there, three receptions, 51 yards. Uh, that's the best receiving core in, in the league? You think so, huh? I mean, we, well, Hainsey had a catch for minus three. That was good. Or Rush, I believe. Either way, um, we're not better, we're not better than anybody in anything right now. There's nothing, there's... It's not rocket science. It's not. For Carlton Davis to play that poorly? No, I could talk about JTS, Joe, uh, Joe Tryon, Shreyanka playing poorly, but that's not a change. Let me t- let me tell you the uh, the funny positives that he uh, ca- caused yesterday. Joe Tryon, Frank is funny to me because I just don't get it. I don't understand it at all, okay? Joe Tryon, Shreyanka yesterday <clears throat> got an interception that was caused by somebody else. Caught it, he ran. The other team tackled him fairly, and then he threw the football at the guy, and he got a 15 yard penalty. You don't think that's a big deal? You don't think that's a big deal? You don't think it's a big deal to be mature? You don't? And then the other thing he created was this listen to this. And you go back and watch tape if you want. I'm an offensive lineman, so. I see a lot of stuff. I've never seen this in my in, in my whole existence of watching football. The tackle on the Texans put his hands on Joe Transharanka, grabbed him, and threw him like a rag doll. Watch me. And he threw him not straight back to the side. So the tackle stopped, and Joe Transharanka went five yards to the left and back. And here came the flag, as, and it was a penalty. And I'm like, are they going to flag that guy for being mean? They flagged him for holding. On everything I've ever loved in my life, everybody, listen to this closely. You can find me an example if you want to, but you won't find one. You'll never find a holding call where the defender is five yards from the holding guy, ever. Go find it. It was funny. He got thrown and the tackle afterward goes, looks at, uh, at the ref, goes, you can't, you, you're not serious. He threw him like a rag doll. And Joe Transranca did his whole baby deer in the headlights thing. I don't know what he does. And he fell on his back. And the offensive lineman got a penalty. Shame. 
shame. And if the defensive coach for the Buccaneers, whoever D-line coach is, if they don't tell, tell them that they're embarrassed by that, I, I'll do it. I'll do it. It was embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. Now, if you beat somebody by, on their edge and you make somebody tug you down and that's a holding penalty, okay. I don't want to get thrown for a holding penalty myself, personally. I don't want to do it. I don't think it looks good for your defense. I don't think it looks good for your defense for him to even be in there. I'll be honest with you. We have a couple guys here and there that are that are fighting still. Devin White is just to me it just talks a lot. I just don't really see Devin White doing. He got a sack yesterday. It was his first sack of the year. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of I I I need to get paid paid. No, you don't need to do anything. You're gonna get what you deserve. Devin White doesn't deserve a new contract from this football team. No way. No way. I'm always about players getting their money. Always. Devin White does not deserve money right now. No way. Especially after you bitched and moaned last year after a, a subpar year. That's not leadership to me. Levante, uh, uh, Levante, hats off to you. You're keeping this together, okay? Antoine Winfield Jr. I think starts on just about any football team. But other than that, you know, Vita Vea up and down when he's playing. But they're always hurt. That doesn't matter to me. You got you to do more than that. And we need to get other names to emerge and start doing a little something out there. I just think this is what, this is what we are. Chris Godwin is a, is a good possession wide receiver when there's other things going on. He can't be the go-to guy. Mike Evans, before the game, was 20th in receiving. I mean, when does that ever happen? 20th in receiving. He's not Mike, Mike Evans is not Mike Evans anymore. He's not. We have to understand that. I, I feel like I should say all due respect after that because I have much respect for Mike Evans. He's not Mike Evans anymore. When people talk about we should re-sign Mike Evans, why? To do what? To suffer like everybody else next year? If that, does anybody think, I want everybody to take your Buccaneer hat off, okay? If you have a pewter one, if you have an orange one, whatever, take it off for a second. Then think about this football team next year and think of, tell me it's going to get better and why. Think about that for a second. We're asking for Bowles to get fired. People are asking for Canales to get fired. We don't know who our quarterback is going to be. Our defensive scheme, if you get rid of everybody except for Antoine Winfield Jr., Jamel Dean, Levante David, and Vita Vea, nobody would complain. That's four guys. Offensively, offensive line-wise, would anybody cry if they got rid of everybody other than Tristan Wirth? And which one would you be fighting for uh, in the second guy? Cody Malk is a, is a, is a, a rookie. You got to keep him in there. All right. Gadecki. Yuck. There's been times he played okay, but who am I comparing him to? There's too many penalties. It's just, it's not pretty. Hainsey, I, I don't watch Hainsey tight. I, I heard he grades out terribly in pro football focus. I don't go d d in that deep, but they know they got football people grading it, okay? Our left guard's here, there, and everywhere. We don't really know who it is, so Philo is playing okay, then he gets hurt. Anyways, I don't blame people for getting hurt, but when you evaluate somebody, you have to be on the football field. So Tristan Worse, offensively. Does anybody think that Kate Otten is a, a number one tight end? Raise your hand if you think he's the number one tight end. On what team? What good team has a, has a Kate Otten as their number one guy? And Kate Otten was our, was balling yesterday, but no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear. Oh, what? Nope, nope. It's not enough. It's not. He had a great game yesterday. Applauds, but it's not enough. It, it's 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 eight games. Show me the eight games. And if you did what you did yesterday, eight games worth. Believe me, I'll be the first one to stick it on my shoulders. Kate Otten, let's go. Not happening. Not happening. Our wide receivers, every team, you give me every team. I'm not sure the Buccaneers are top 20 wide receiver core anymore. Either that or quarterback ain't the right guy. Quarterback, we're not top 25. You can't give me eight quarterbacks that make him feels better than. No. It'd be close. Not 10. I would have to say, show me their, you know, the resume, show me their bio. 
Baker's still better than some, but not lately. Not in the last three, four years. I mean, you're going to pull out the one year, but I hear people talking about Tim Tebow's one pass still. You have to let things go, okay? And I think everybody's still enamored that Baker Mayfield bought a house here and he he has an organization here, and it's not about off the field, it's about on the field. And on the field, he just doesn't seem like the right guy. He, He just doesn't. And I find myself defending Todd Bowles at times. Uh, I think there's times where head coaching is overrated, but it's not today. I'm not defending Todd Bowles today because when you are a defensive-minded coach, a la Tony Dungy, and by the way, I'll be interviewing Tony Dungy on Friday on my Brooks and Beckles uh, podcast. If you have a defensive mind like Tony Dungy, you cannot like Tony Dungy, but I will go. I would say go back to the tape. You know what the tape's going to show? Wicked defenses. Wicked. Yeah. This defense is so far from wicked. It ain't close to wicked. Tony Dungy brought wicked defenses with Monty Kiffin. I'm not going over the, the names. I'm not doing it. I don't have to. Okay. Ain't a lot of wicked on this defense. There's not. Everybody's trouncing us. Everybody. Go back to the old school Buccaneers and see what happened when you put a young quarterback against those guys. A young quarterback wanted to quit by half. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to go back out there. This quarterback came out and torched us in the third quarter for 208 yards. 208 yards in one quarter. Are you shitting me? Come on now. Let's stop saying we're good. Because nobody gets 208 yards in any quarter, in any situation, any bad team against a, I've never heard that before. So we can't, a team that gives up 208 yards in one quarter, we should never We should never say that defense is good again. Never. Or a long time from now until you get rid of all them slappies. There's too many slappies out there. There is. It's too many. And I, my problem is I'm not sure I see the solution. I try my darndest to, to to defend Todd Bowles at times because I think head coaching sometimes is it's just you don't have the personnel. You have a rookie this, you have a rookie that, you have a rookie play caller. Your quarterback came off a trash heap, okay, but your defense is not good, playboy. It's not good. It's not good. And to let a rookie get 470 and five touchdowns, you're a defensive coach. It's hard, man. That's hard for me to... To get, it's hard for me to give you the credit for that. Listen, you have a rookie quarterback that's driving down the field in 30-something seconds, 40 seconds, whatever the hell it was, and there was time left on the clock. I, I think it was 46 seconds, I think it was, and there was nine seconds left on the clock. Usually, if, you let, if it's 46 seconds, at least make them expire the clock, so there was still time left on the clock. Like, they had to slow down at the end. We're, we're scoring too fast. We had 46 seconds to go down the whole damn field, and we're scoring too fast. Okay. If anybody plays Madden, and I love to play Madden, all right, you have two choices. Play coverage or pressure them. I didn't see either all game. I, I think I saw one blitz from Devin White, and he got a sack. The rest of the time, it just seemed like it just sat back and let a rookie quarterback Torch our ass all day long. And in that situation, back in the once let's go back in the day, because that's that's all I have to fall back on. Is back in the day defense with the Buccaneers, all right? Back in the day, that game was over. You hear me? That that rookie quarterback would have no chance. This is what would have happened. They lined up Warren Sapp and Simeon Rice and uh Booger McFarland and Chidi, whoever the heck was there, okay? What Along the four, they go, guys, go get the quarterback and bring him back to me. That's how it went. And the seven guys will just drop. The Cardi Nickersons, the Sheldon Quarles, the Rondé Barbers, the John Lynches, the uh, Donnie Abraham, all of them are going to drop and do and be where they're supposed to be. You four guys go hunt. Those guys are just waiting all day to hunt. Now they're hunting. What happened yesterday? You guys, hey guys, do us a favor and go get the quarterback. 
All right, coach, let's go get him. And the quarterback's sitting back there, letting going through his progressions 30 yards down the field. No way. Come on, man. Come on, man. If you don't have four dogs out there, then blitz. You don't have four dogs, blitz. Get that damn ball out of his hand. Get it out. He stood back there. One, one time he, he stood back for four seconds, took two steps up, took a step back, then completed a 37-yard pass. It's just not a sign of a good defense at all, all right? You, you lose four games in a row. Your defense had been opportunistic and slash lucky in the first seven games. They got exposed yesterday. They got exposed yesterday. I'm just not sure they can come back from that. I'm not sure that Todd Bowles can look at his defense in the face and still have the same mentality anymore. I'm not sure. And let's go back to Todd Bowles, who once again, I've tried to defend at times. His press conferences are starting to confuse me a little bit. I know he's not trying to say anything, but you're saying too much almost. So Coach Bowles, when you, when you say we keep on busting in the defensive backfield, it's unacceptable. What do you mean by that? You have to explain to me what unacceptable means because when you keep on saying it, then it's acceptable or it's ex accepted. If you keep on saying, if you come in late, I'm going to ground you. If you come in late, I'm going to ground you. And they keep on doing it, it's acceptable or it's being accepted. Saying that busted coverage are unacceptable and every week come out with the same cats, that's unacceptable, okay? And he's almost separating himself from the players. You got to watch out for that, coach. If you're saying it's unacceptable, you're kind of saying that I told him. I told him. I told him. And when you say I told him, the players start looking at you like, you okay, but I thought we were all in this together. But when I hear it's unacceptable, a lot of things were unacceptable yesterday. A lot of things have been unacceptable the last four weeks. A lot of things. A lot of things. Coaching has been unacceptable for me. When I watch a lot of football, and I watch as much football as anybody out there, I see teams scheming people open. I see teams blitzes, exotic blitzes. I'm like, man, I never saw that before. When was the last time you did that for the Buccaneers? I just don't see the greatness. I don't see the, the innovative innovation on offense or defense or special teams. We could be innovative on special teams. You can do whatever you want. I just don't see any brilliance anywhere. And Todd Bowles is supposed to be a brilliant football coach and brilliant defensive coach. I'm not seeing the brilliance. I'm not seeing the brilliance in the evaluation of talent. I'm not seeing the brilliance in the schemes. There's just no brilliance out here right now, not for the Buccaneers. And I'm sorry it's 28 minutes of ho-hum, but <laughs> it's pretty freaking ho-hum right now, yo. I believe they're playing the Titans and the, and, and the 49ers. I got some news for you guys and gals. It doesn't matter who we play. We can't beat anybody. When you lose four games in a row, go look and see how many teams have made it to the playoffs losing four games in a row at any time of, the, of their, of their uh, season. I'm not sure the number, but I'm almost positive it's a very, 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 very low number. Okay, so here's where we are. We lose four in a row, all right? We're three and five from three and one. I don't want to, this is what I can't hear next, next week. This is a must win. It's not. It's not. Because if you win one game and you won one of five, it's not must win. It's not. Because if you win next week and then you lose to San Francisco, you've been out. It's too much. It's too deep. It's too deep in it now. We're not good enough to make a string of wins right now. We're not good enough. I don't see it. And if we do put a string of wins together, it's not going to be against great teams. The Buccaneers have already established that they can't beat good teams. They certainly can't beat great teams, and there's not that many out there. Look down the way. Other than Carolina, who looks just as good as the Bucks right now, there's not that many bad teams on, on the schedule. And if you're saying, what about Atlanta? What about Atlanta? If you're saying, what about the, the, the Saints? What about the Saints? They're both playing better than the Buccaneers. I'm trying to think of a team that's playing worse than the Buccaneers right now. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I can't. Here's where we are. Three and five. Giving up winning drives. 
We're not developing anything. And the future ain't so bright right now, unfortunately. It's sad, but this is where we are. When Tom left, we knew we have to pay for Tom and what Tom brought. And to what Tom did, what Tom saved lives. Tom, Tom saved, saved Jason Light's life. Tom saved Todd Bowles' life. Bruce Arians' life. Tom saved a lot. But he knew on the way out it's going to, everybody's going to sting, but he brought, us, he brought us a bowl, man. He brought us a ring. When you, leave, when you bring a ring, everything else is good on the way out. Everything's okay on the way out. It'll be, it'll be accepted. Not like uh, Todd Bowles, everything is un unacceptable. Start making some moves. I see a lot of unacceptable play out there, but I'm not seeing any changes, and we're not going to go over the uh, definition of ignorance. If anybody uh, wants to hear some more of this football talk, I do um, a podcast with Derek Brooks called Brooks and Beckles, and we have Tony Dungy this week on Friday. We just had some good discussions about football and life and parenting and leadership and the whole nine yards, and um, i got some other podcasts as well, but I appreciate everybody listening in. Follow me on Instagram. It's a lot of food and football stuff. Ian underscore Beckles. And uh, I'm not going to ask for Victory Mondays anymore because I'm getting tired. My mouth's dry anyways because I'm, I'm tired of wasting my breath. Enjoy whatever happens this week, and let's hope that something crazy happens next week before the San Francisco game. Everybody have a wonderful week, and please be safe. Peace.